so read the question uh, along with the uh, so the problem that we have done the last problem we have done is a yeah, two rotor problem okay so this is also a two rotor problem right so read the question carefully at steel shaft abc the 1.5 meter long is 90 mm diameter in the first 0.6 meter of its length 60 mm diameter in the next 0.5 meter length and 50 mm diameter for the remaining 0.4 meter length the shaft carries two ply wheels at the two ends first having a mass of 900 kg 0.85 meter radius of gyration at the 95 mm diameter end and the second having 700 kg and 0.5 mm radius of variation located at the other end determine the location of the node and the natural frequency of free cast vibration of the system modulus of rigidity of the shaft material is uh, 80 giga newton per meter square okay so given data so first portion is 50 mm diameter there is something wrong in the question okay, 50 mm diameter for the first point this question is wrong so give me 2 minutes i'll correct the question then we we'll see the problem okay it's correct only but it is read from the other side so please refer the diagram for the details the question is wrong in the book itself so d1 is 50 mm uh, and the length of that portion is 0.4 meter just look at the diagram and proceed with the problem d2 is 60 mm and the length of that portion is 0.5 meter d3 is unknown value d the length of that portion is 0.6 meter okay mass of the flywheel a is 600 kg radius of gyration is 0.6 meter for that flywheel a mass of the flywheel d on the other end is 800 kg and radius of gyration for that is given as 0.9 meter okay so what are all the things i want to find out determine the location of the node determine the location of the node and the natural frequency of the free torsional vibration of the system okay these two are the questions the modulus of rigidity is 80 giga newton per meter square clear so to find the location of the node you have to solve for this unknown diameter and then only you can find out the remaining things okay so the first line of the question is wrong there is some mistake in the textbook itself i'm sorry i didn't uh, look into that so you will take this as final no problem okay because i have done the problem i know this is correct we will correct this and share the ppt this as of now we will go ahead with these values okay whatever is listed as given data right length of the equivalent shaft first of all you convert this into an equivalent shaft so first of all let us convert this into equivalent shaft i am going to take the first diameter as the diameter of the equivalent shaft this portion okay take this as your diameter of the equivalent you can take any one so i am taking the first one okay uh, l1 plus if you you can choose any one but if you choose the second one then this d d will not come here it will come here d1 by d d2 if you choose this then it will become d1 by d3 d2 by d3 this will not come d3 by d3 will get vanished okay so that is the difference right so d1 is 0.05 l1 is 0.4 d2 is 0.06 l2 is 0.5 d3 is unknown value and l3 is 0.6 okay substitute all the numbers into the above equation l is equal to so 0.4 plus 0.5 into all the numbers i am substituting one important thing you have to remember is i have put this d in the denominator this remains unknown okay so solve all the other numbers except d so we'll get an equation like this l is equal to 0.4 plus 0.24 the solution of this fraction is 0.24 so if you solve this in a calculator we'll get 0.24 plus uh, if you solve all the other numbers except d you will get 3.75 to 10 power minus 6 divided by 
d power 4 keep it as it is because d is unknown keep it as equation 1 ok so next thing uh, <coughs> moment of inertia calculation uh, it is very simple yeah, i equal to mk square ok same things uh, i equal to mk square put the value 216 the other one is 648 if you put the numbers correct numbers ok i equal to mk square after this k and this k you substitute ma is 600 mk is 0.6 so, MA is 600, the KA is 0 0.6, you will get 216 kilogram meter square as the moment of inertia of this K. Similarly, for this B, MB is 800, KB is 0 0.9, so you will get 648 kilogram meter square. Okay, so the calculation of D3, we know that LA IA equal to LD ID instead of B because the rotor here is B, it is named as B in the question. So, inertia is only for the rotors. Okay. So, uh, IA is 216, ID is, uh, this should be ID, not B. ID is 648. So, LA into 216, LD is 648. So, that gives me a ratio of LA by 3. LD is LA by 3. The uh, nodal location on the uh, equivalent shaft uh, from the flywheel D uh, will be 3 times greater than the nodal location from the shaft A. That is the meaning. Okay. So, we know that the node lies at the center of the length BC. It is mentioned in the question. There is one sentence in the question which states uh, the node lies in the uh, center of the length BC of the original shaft. Okay. So, the distance of the node from the rotor on the equivalent shaft LA equal to. Uh, do you understand this condition? Uh, let's, let us go back and see the diagram. Then you will understand. There is a word in the question which tells me that. Uh, the node location on the actual shaft is at the midpoint of the section BC. Okay, what is the BC section of the shaft? You see here. So, the nodal location is given to you. See here, it is marked. It is mentioned in the question. So, nodal location is at the midpoint of this N. So, now what I am going to my equivalent shaft is of diameter 50. So, this 0.4 I can take as it is plus remaining LA distance of the node from shaft A minus L1 this remaining portion I have to convert into equivalent shaft diameter and add it to the uh, so the equivalent shaft uh, initial segment length so that I can get LA clear so I am going to add it L1 plus L2 by 2, because it is given as the midpoint, this should be a suffix, okay, L2. At the midpoint of the second section, I do not have to subtract and find out the length, it is a midpoint. So, L2 by 2 into D1, I am converting, D1 by D2 to the whole power 4. So, D1, D2, L1, L2, everything I am taking, substituting all the numbers, LA equal to initial portion, see, uh, there is a shaft like this, and the actual shaft, the second portion of the shaft, and it is mentioned that at the midpoint of this portion only the node is lying. Therefore, I am taking the equivalent shaft with this diameter. Okay. So, the, this portion up to this portion is exactly same. No change. Remaining this length L2 by 2 because this is L2. The mid of L2 lies my node. Therefore, L2 by 2 and I am changing it to equivalent diameter. How do I, how do I change? L, uh, L2 by 2 into uh, D2 by I mean D1 by D2, how you found out the equivalent length, okay. So D1 by D2, convert it, then you can directly get the value of LA, 0 0.52, okay. Similarly, also I know that this relationship I have derived, LD equal to LA by 3, therefore 0 0.52 by 3, I will get 0 0.173. So therefore, total length of the equivalent shaft, LA plus LD, you can calculate, clear, that's very simple, LA equal to 0 0.52, LD by 0 0.173, LD. Any, any doubts in this? Please feel free to ask. So, there is one sentence in the question which tells me the node is lying at the middle of the second portion of the shaft. The first portion 50 mm diameter and the second portion is some diameter for uh, the L2. So, here is my node. Therefore, I am converting, I am calculating for this is rotor A. So, LA I am calculating in the equivalent shaft. This length as it is because my equivalent shaft is of the same diameter, I can take as it is L1. Okay. Similarly, the L2 there is a change in diameter. Therefore, L2 Midpoint of L2 is L2 by 2. This portion I am taking and I am converting it to the equivalent shaft diameter. D1 by D2 all power 4. So, if I do that, I will get the single diameter actual required length for the nodal location. Okay. So, that is how I have found out LALD. 
so now calculation of d3 la plus ld equal to l <coughs> so also i have an equation for l unsolved equation where i have d44 in the denominator so la ld so total length i can put, so add these two and find out the total l so sub equate these two and solve for d okay so if you do all the mathematical steps we will get it as 0.0917 which is 91.7 millimeter as the third portion diameter okay so i have solved for the third portion diameter natural frequency of free torsion vibration j equal to pi by 32 d power 4 so pi by 32 pi naught pi power 4 i am i am taking the first portion equal and then diameter so that is 0.614 into 10 power minus 6 meter power 4 okay natural frequency of free torsion vibration 1 by 2 pi root of cj by la ia so c is 80 j is 0.614 into 10 power minus 6 la is 0.52 ia is 216 substitute all the numbers so 80 into 10 power 9 c and uh, j is 0.614 into 10 power minus 6 so this is your j uh, divided by la is 0 0.52 ia is 216 solve it you will get 3.33 hertz okay so that completes the problem natural frequency of rate of noise pressure 3.33 hertz uh, results i am going to sum up location of the node so on the equivalent shaft la equal to 0 0.52 ld equal to 0 0.173 Natural frequency of retraction vibration 3.33 hertz. So that completes the problem which is taken from your Kurmi textbook.